What if I told you that after driving my Tesla Model 3 over 57,000 miles, the battery shows no sign of degradation or loss of range? Would you slap me in the face and call me a liar? I would totally understand, but in this video, which is sponsored by my friends at Morning Brew, I'll explain my driving and charging habits that have resulted in no battery degradation after almost two and a half years. Now, when I got my Model 3 in 2018, the rated range was 310 miles. But what exactly is rated range? Well, according to Tesla, it is the distance the car can travel on a single charge based on official EPA data. So you know how gasoline cars have miles per gallon or MPG ratings? That's basically what rated range is for electric vehicles. It's also the amount of energy the battery has stored at a given point in time. However, the range displayed in Tesla is not based on personal driving patterns, so it's natural for this displayed range to fluctuate due to the nature of battery technology and how the onboard computer calculates range. A Tesla's actual range depends on many factors, but mainly the environment, and driving and charging habits. Now, to get a better idea of my actual range, I use the Stats iPhone app, which gives me all kinds of cool data about my Tesla, primarily the range estimates. Now, right now, it shows that my car is charged to 30%, and it shows me my estimated range is 96 miles at the current state of charge, or SOC, which is based on recent driving habits. But it also shows my rated range based on my overall battery health. According to this, my rated range for a full charge is 324 miles, which is actually a higher rated range than when I bought the car over two years ago. I posted this on Twitter and received a lot of responses asking me how I achieved such good range after driving so many miles, and even the app developer claimed my rated range was very impressive. And there's also another app called Battery Compare, which lets you see how your Tesla range compares to others with similar mileage. So when I input my range information into that app, it says my Model 3's rated range is better than 100% of users. Now, I'm not claiming to know the exact secret souse to such good battery life, but I have always tried to maximize my efficiency, so I think that plays a part in my successful battery health so far. To help you try to do the same, here are all my driving and charging habits for my Tesla Model 3. But before we jump in, I wanna quickly tell you about today's sponsor, Morning Brew, which is a free daily newsletter, Monday through Saturday, to get you up to speed on all the important business news of the day in just five minutes. My wife actually introduced me to this a few months ago, and we absolutely love reading it as part of our morning routine. Morning Brew does such a good job at providing business news in a fun, interesting way. Traditional finance and business news is usually boring, but Morning Brew has a witty, relevant style to their writing that makes it easy to consume. It's my favorite newsletter and it's how I found out that Tesla was in the top 10 most popular Robinhood stocks last week and how I learned about Microsoft potentially buying TikTok. If you're a fan of Tesla tech and finance, you should absolutely subscribe to Morning Brew. It's completely free and takes less than 15 seconds, so click the link in the description below to subscribe to Morning Brew today. First off, I have a long range single motor Model 3 with 18 inch aero wheels, which makes it the most efficient Tesla. And although you may think they're ugly, I actually like the aero wheel caps because they do provide a slight boost in efficiency. So I end up leaving them on about 95% of the time. Now, speaking of wheels, I keep my tires set to around 40 to 42 PSI, which results in better efficiency. If you want a more comfortable ride, you can set the PSI lower. Now, I replaced my tires at around 40,000 miles and got these Redestein Quattrack 5 grand touring all seasons which are a mouthful and also a bestseller on tire rack for a very affordable price and i'll link to these in the description below now, so far they've been great just slightly louder on sharp turns than the original tires but i seem to still get great range with these if we go to the tesla touchscreen you can see my three driving settings are all set to standard across the board with hold on and creep off don't be creepy if you don't have regen braking set to standard and hold enabled, I highly recommend changing those because it not only allows you to drive with just one pedal for the majority of the time, but it will maximize efficiency by putting energy back into the battery when you lift off the accelerator. But the best part about this is trying to perfect the regen braking to where you can consistently predict exactly when you need to lift off the accelerator for the car to come to a complete stop right where you need it without ever pressing the brake. This is actually my favorite game to play in my Tesla, not any of the virtual ones. Now, I'm no stranger to the accelerator. I like punching it from time to time, especially if I need to merge or pass. But since this isn't a performance model, it's not like it is insanely fast and I don't drive like a madman. I'm pretty conservative for the most part. I rarely go over 80 miles an hour. So for most of you, this translates to I drive like an old man most of the time. <laughs> 
I live in Louisville, Kentucky, where we experience all four seasons, 100 degrees in the summer and below freezing in the winter. My Tesla is in my garage at night, but sits out in the elements during the day. But I actually have cabin heat protection set to off so I can save the most energy. Instead, I like to use the mobile app to vent my windows if it's going to be really hot outside and having a sunshade visor like this one helps too. I also rarely charge my phone in my car, which is probably something that doesn't even matter to be honest, but I told you I'm sharing everything that affects energy usage. And if you've seen my previous road trip video, you know I'm pretty conservative with my AC and heater. I only set it to the minimum setting needed to feel comfortable. I don't leave it on full blast all the time. Now, speaking of trips, I've only taken my Tesla on a handful of road trips, three of which were long trips over 1,000 miles each, and the rest were shorter road trips under 500 miles each. The majority of my normal driving consists of about 80 miles every weekday, and most of those miles are driven by autopilot on the highway. So my battery gets run down to about 40 to 50% five times a week. And in my opinion, I think autopilot drives in a manner that achieves better efficiency than a human foot can. Now, my charging habits are probably one of the biggest factors that contribute to my good battery health so far. I only supercharge when I'm on a long road trip. I just don't think that frequent, extremely fast charging speeds that the superchargers provide can be good for battery health over time. So almost all of my charging is done at home on a NEMA 1450 outlet using the Tesla mobile connector. And my outlet usually charges at about eight kilowatts or 30 miles an hour. I try to leave my Tesla plugged into the charging outlet as much as possible whenever I'm not driving. So if the car's at my house, it's usually plugged in. Now, I think the biggest factor may be that I only charge to 80% for all of my daily driving. Some say, and even Tesla says, you can charge up to 90% for daily driving, but I've always done about 80% based on what I found online during my research back when I got my Model 3. And like with all Teslas, I only charge to 100% right before long road trips, and I drive it as soon as possible after it reaches 100%. So you don't want to charge up to 100% unless you absolutely need to. That's huge for battery longevity. And I rarely ever let my Tesla go below 10% state of charge. Only a few times on road trips has that happened. So when it comes down to it, Tesla says there are several factors that affect lithium ion cycle life, but emphasizes these four factors that are related to how the cell is used. Avoid very high and very low states of charge, such as 95% SOC and 2% SOC, which cause more stress on the insides of the battery cell. Avoid very high charge rates. Charging faster than a two hour charge can reduce the cell's life. Avoid charging at temperatures below zero degrees Celsius. Now Tesla battery packs have the ability to preheat before charging if needed. Avoid very high discharge rates. A Tesla designed their packs such that even at maximum discharge rate, the current required from each cell is not excessive. So I think if you follow those guidelines along with most of the tips I've shared, you should be able to avoid any major hit to your Tesla range and battery life. If you have any other tips, please comment them below and let me know what your current rated range is for your Tesla if you have one. Be sure to give this video a like if it helped you out and subscribe for more Tesla and tech videos. My name is Andy. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.